Hi, I'm Michael Ferrier, and this is a demo of the bouncing ball example using my C++ implementation of Memento's protocol learning algorithm. I'm going to start by loading up the network configuration file here. The bouncing ball example is just a series of frames of an animation of a ball bouncing up and down. Okay, I'm going to zoom out so we can get a better view. advance to the first frame where we see the ball. This is the input to the network. It's just an image of the ball where all the pixels that make it up are filled in or activated. And this is the uh, hierarchical temporal memory region that receives the input from, from this. And uh, all the orange columns here are what's initially active to represent this first frame. Now I'm going to mark all the cells that are active. And I'm going to display these marked marks of little black dots on the cells. So now we can go ahead to the second frame, second time step, where we see in the input, there's about half of the inputs are the same at, in the first cell, in the first frame versus the second frame. So there's a lot of overlap in the input. And we can see in the, uh, in the region here, in what, what cells are active in the region, um, all the orange ones are active for the second input here. All the ones with the black dots were active for the first input. So you see about half the ones that are active for the second input were also active for the first input. So that's a lot of overlap. It would be a lot better for the temporal cooler if these two different overlapping inputs were separated much better, if they had a very different set of columns active for them. So I have the spatial cooler with boosting uh, turned on for the first uh, 2,000 time steps. So I'm just going to run ahead now to time 1973, which is the, which is, uh, the first frame again, but towards the end of the boosting period, so that we can compare. So it's running ahead now, and I will Pause the video here for a moment while it does that. Okay, here we are again at uh, here we are at time 1973 at the first frame again. Now we can see that the set of columns that are active for the first frame now after boosting has changed quite a bit. Uh, all of the orange columns here are active for this first frame after boosting. It's like they've been pushed up uh, to avoid overlap with the other columns, with the other images of the ball which are further down. Um, there's just a few that are active now for the first frame that were active at the very beginning. Um, so now if I mark what what is actually active now for the first frame and move ahead to the second frame, now there's very few columns. There's four columns that are uh, active for both the first and second frame. So it's not a complete separation, uh, but it's much better uh, than it was before boosting. And if we look, if we zoom out a bit in a moment here, Oops. and look at boosting values, we see that uh, very little boosting was necessary in here around the path that the ball follows because uh, those columns tended to be active anyway. Most of the boosting happened outside of uh, the area where the ball mostly uh, bounces up and down. So now I'm going to uh, let the temporal cooler do its job and advance over to time 2582, which again will be the first frame. Uh, and I'll do that now and pause the recording until that's done. Okay, here we are at time 2582, where the temporal cooler has now uh, learned all of the sequences and predictions. Uh, so now, I'll turn off viewing the mark cells here, and instead of showing what's active in the region, on the right here, I'm going to show 
the input again, but the top-down reconstruction. So again, this is just running the synapses backwards from what's active in the region to reconstruct the inputs that would lead to that activity. Uh, so I'll run a I'll run through the animation showing that. Oh, wait a second here. Okay, so here's the reconstruction. For every frame that it's running here, it's running the synapses backwards and showing the input that will lead to that frame. So that's expected to look pretty good because uh, it's not showing any predictions here, it's just running the synapses backwards for, from what's active. Um, but if instead of showing the reconstruction, we show the top-down predictions, now over here it's uh, it's running the synapses backwards, not from what's actually active, but from what is predicted to be active in one step. So how good this looks basically tells us uh, how good the predictions are. So now if I just run this continuously here. Well, I'll start by going a few steps. See, when we get to the last frame, it is now uh, predicting, most of the prediction is happening for the first frame. And when we get the first frame, predicting the second frame, and so on. So now I'll just advance continuously here. And what it's showing on the right is what's predicted for the next frame. And as you can see, it uh, it's, looks just about as good as the reconstruction looked, uh, which isn't perfect because there are some columns that are uh, in common between uh, one frame and another. But uh, it's very close to perfect as a reconstruction, and the predictions appear to be uh, very, very close to, to correct. And that's about it. Thank you very much.